All right, in this lesson, we are going to actually start talking more about our ecosystems and food and oxygen, because that is going to be actually where we are going to start designing food webs, and that's going to lead us into another project uh, to finish out the school year. Now, you can just simply follow along with my notes that are here. However, if you go to the uh, ZCS portal and then go to the Discovery Ed option, it'll give you the option uh, or it'll take you to uh, the uh, food and oxygen section here, which I've linked on our OneNote notes. Now, this is simply if you want to get more information about uh, this section, uh, reading through the Engage, watching some of the videos, uh, doing some of the matching, some of these notes. Uh, I'll go through this picture in our notes, uh, but getting a little bit more information, especially in the Explore section about how do animals get energy that they need to live. Now, I'm going to do a quick and easy uh, walkthrough of this section here. So um, let's start in. So we're going to start in on how do animals get the energy they need to live. And first off, it's very important to know that all animals are consumers. However, we can break down consumers into four different types. Now, some of them only eat plants, and those are called herbivores. And now if you break down herb, herbs are like the uh, thyme and cilantro and, um, oh goodness, uh, all kinds of the little green type of plants that you would to use to cook with. Um, now we can go one step further that the type of animals that only eat other animals, those are carnivores. Now carn means flesh. So these are things that eat the flesh of other things. Uh, and so think of like lions, uh, or let's backtrack to herbivores. Those would be like cows and elephants. Carnivores would be like lions and tigers. Now our next one are uh, consumers that eat both plants and animals. And these are omnivores. Now, omnivores, omni, means all. If you are omnivorous, you eat both plants and animals. So we have uh, bears are omnivores. People are omnivores. Now, we have the ability to eat both, both plants and animals. It doesn't mean that everybody does. I know that there's vegetarians and there's different types of uh, eating habits that people have. However, we have the ability to eat both plants and animals. It's just, you know, our choice of what we do eat. Now, our last one here, these eat dead animals, and these are our scavengers. Now, scavengers would be like hyenas and turkey vultures. So they eat dead animals, just like we eat dead animals. However, we hunt the, the food we eat or um, we process them. Hyenas or vultures, turkey vultures, they are looking for the leftovers of something else or they are finding something that has already died and they eat that. So they're not the ones killing it to eat. Now we can illustrate a uh, transfer of energy through a food chain and a food web. Now the difference of a chain and a web is a chain shows how energy is passed from one organism to another. So we showed this transfer of energy with an arrow. So if I had a plant and it goes to a, um, a cricket or a, an ant, right? The ant would eat the plant. So the energy goes from the plant to the ant. Now, if I were to show a web, well, and then let's have a bird eat the ant. So this would be a food chain. So it's just showing one transfer of energy to another. However, a food web would be is if I were to add in and say, well, that plant can also be eaten by a bird because birds might eat seeds from a plant. 
and then this ant could go to that bird. And we could also say that um, let's have a cat because cats chase birds. So the energy could go to that cat. And so then this energy from this bird could also go to that cat. And we could even then have a, let's have a hawk, could eat another bird, um, in which that energy could go here. And let's have, um, uh, we could really go infinitely with this. And so do you see how now we've created some web-like structure where it's not just one flow, like the purple uh, illustration here, the green has added in a more dynamic uh, show of how that energy is transferring. So now how are animals' actions and body parts adapted to obtain the different types of food will they need? Well, we call those adaptations. So adaptations help obtain the food animals need to survive. And those are the body parts or their behaviors. So herbivores, herbivores have flat teeth. And I'll show you a picture of that in a little while. I'll attach that um, to this. But herbivores have flat teeth on the front for ripping a plant and flat teeth in the back for grinding. So think like a cow. It has to grab onto the grass and then yank it out of the ground and then just chew it up a long, long time to break it down. If you feel the back of your teeth, those molars that you have, they're flat. It's exactly like how all the teeth are pretty much in a cow or an animal that only eats plants, like an elephant. They only eat grasses. Now, carnivores, they have strong legs and sharp claws to catch their prey because herbivores don't need to chase down the plants to go get them, right? Um, carnivores have to have strong legs to chase down other things but they also have sharp teeth in the front to tear apart and eat food. So if you feel even your front teeth now, those front of your teeth, they're kind of uh, very thin and sharp, especially like the canine one, kind of you have two of them on the front uh, front sides of your, uh, of your mouth. And those are really pointy in order to bite in and tear meat. Like if you're eating a hot dog or a hamburger or a steak, Something that is very meaty and fleshy like that, it helps you bite into it and be able to tear. So hawks, their behaviors help also sneak up on uh, other things to eat. So think of like a lion crawling along and stalking its prey, and then it pounces really fast as has strong muscles. Hawks can sit a really long time and not spook their prey all spring quickly in to catch their prey. So those hawks would then have really good eyesight also to swoop down and catch something that's really small that make, makes little subtle movements. They have the ability to then grab on with those talons to catch it. Now us, we're omnivores. And we have similar body parts to both herbivores and carnivores. That allows us to obtain and eat both types of food. So think of your teeth, right? So that picture I showed in our notes here, uh, this would be another illustration of a food web. So as we look at this, we have rabbit and a mouse and a squirrel. We have grass, tree, deer, caterpillar, bird, a hawk, and an owl. So let's break this down. So if we're looking at this, things that eat plants and they have plant grinding teeth, well, we have to think of what are things that are only eating other plants. And... I'm just gonna go through this fairly quickly here, but that'd be our rabbit because they are getting energy from the grass. And do you see, and keep in mind where the arrow is pointing to. It's not that the rabbit is going to the grass, but the arrow shows, the arrow shows the transfer of energy. So the energy from the grass is going to the rabbit. So now the mouse, it eats the tree bark and the tree leaves. It has sharp teeth in front for gnawing and flat back teeth for grinding. We then have the squirrel. So the two R's and squirrel. So the squirrel eats nuts and leaves, has sharp teeth in front and for gnawing, flat back teeth for grinding, eats 
leaves and small plants has plant grinding teeth, well, that'd be deer. And if we look at the deer, it's getting energy from the grass. It's getting energy from the leaves of the tree. Now, after the deer, we have a caterpillar. AR, right? So the caterpillar eats leaves and has teeth-like parts for tearing and chewing plant parts. So if you look at how the energy goes from the plant or the grasses and the trees, they would go to the caterpillar. But now we have our... Uh, our uh, predators here. So now we have ones that eat bugs and it has a beak for picking up bugs and wings to help search for food. Well, we have a bird. And depending on the bird's beak, it helps also identify what kind of, uh, um, what kind of consumer it is. Ones that have really short, narrow beaks help dig into the ground a little bit easier to find bugs. Ones that have more uh, hook-like beaks, like a hawk, that'd be our next one. So a hawk eats squirrels, mice, rabbits, owls, and has claws for picking up small animals. And an owl, make sure that as you look at this, you don't want to mix these up. Owls don't eat owls, hawks don't eat hawks, right? Um, well, it doesn't mean that they won't, you know, defend themselves, but at the same time, they're going to be searching for other species but we can see how the transfer of energy goes from a producer to the mouse, right? And then that mouse energy can go to the hawk. Or we could have how the grass energy goes to the rabbit, the rabbit energy can go to the hawk or it can go to the owl. We could also then see how the caterpillar gets energy from the grass or from the tree, and that can then go to the bird, which then can go to the hawk. And so we have this whole big flow, energy flow, of how this works. Now, the one thing that we also then would have in here are decomposers, and those are things that break down dead organisms, right? And so decomposers also help, uh, uh, and we talked about that in our previous notes, and those would be like the worms or mushrooms or even microorganisms that help break down things. And without decomposers, they wouldn't. Uh, we would have a lot of buildup of dead producers, but then even some dead consumers. All right. So this is our uh, quick run through of food webs and food chains showing the transfer of energy from one thing to another. This is really important because it's going to help you with our next project to finish out our school year. Let me know if you have any questions.